Good morning, lovelies. All right, so today we're going to take rationalizing the denominator to the next level. We're still more one more level after this, but eh, we're good. All right, the other day what we had is we had 4 over square root of 3, and we said cannot have a radical in the denominator. So you got to multiply the denominator by itself and the top by the same thing, because you can multiply any fraction by one, and you haven't changed its value, just put a dress on it, made it look a little different. So that's just going to be four times square root of three. And then remember, when you're multiplying two square roots, um, they're the, exactly the same, it's going to be whatever is underneath the radical. So whatever is under there is three. All right, a little refresher, just in case you weren't sure, that would be square root of 3 times 3, which is going to be square root of 9. And we know that the square root of 9 is 3. See how that just worked its all way around? Yeah, just saying. All right. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take that a step further. And this time we're going to say it's over i, 4 over i. Well, we know that i is really i equals square root of negative 1. So we're really saying 4 over square root of negative 1. Well, that's why we can't have an i on the bottom because it's a, a radical. You can't have a radical under there. So what you're going to do is you're just going to multiply by the radical, which is going to be just i. All right? Remember, i over i is the same thing as 1, so I can multiply a fraction by 1 all day long and still get the fraction. Just going to look a little different. All right, so this is going to be 4i right there. And remember, i is square root of negative 1. So square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1 is going to be whatever's underneath the radical. So it's going to be negative 1. Okay? So what you can do with that, instead of leaving it like this, since it's a negative 1 on the bottom, you can just come up and make that negative 4i. And that would work just fine. Okay, I want to give you a couple. Let you see how you do on this one. Kind of leave that right there. All right, so try this. Try 3x over 2i. Try that. Okay, we're going to come back over here. <clears throat> Your first instinct may be to say 2i to multiply the top and the bottom by 2i. You can do that, but then you're going to end up having to reduce later on anyway because the only radical part right here is just the i. So I'm just going to multiply it by i over i. Now, I know there's an x there, and you're like, what do I do with it? No big deal. Just leave it there. Don't worry about it. And then this is 2 times negative 1, which is going to give you 3xi over negative 2. That's it. Far as you can go with that one. All right. Try one more. All right. On this one. Ooh. Let's make this one fun. Let's make this one 7 over uh, negative 2i. Uh, that one's not too, too hard. Try that one. Okay, you back? Still, multiplying the top times the bottom, top and bottom times i over i, that's going to give me 7i on the top. And then this is going to give me negative 2 times negative 1. So that's going to give me 7i over 2 because negative times negative is a positive. Not bad? I don't think it's too bad. I hope you don't think so either. Okay, let's try one a little bit containing a lot of things in here. All right, so what if we had 3 over i square root of 5? Oh, look at there. Try it. Okay. You're back. All right, so first of all, cannot have the i on the bottom, so we're going to have to multiply the top and bottom times i. But we also can't have the square root of 5 on the bottom, so we're going to have to multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 5 as well. 
Ta-da. <clears throat> Alright, so let's do this. That's going to give me 3i times the square root of 5 on the top. Nothing I can combine there. It just is what it is. Over. Oh, i times i is negative 1. And square root of 5 times square root of 5 is just going to be 5. So that's going to leave me with 3i square root of 5 over negative 5. Ta-da. Okay, now if there was something up here, like say this was a 10, if you pretend this is a 10 right here, so we're going to go do this right here. If this was a 10, we would have to come back at the end and reduce the 5 and the 10. So this would become 1 and this would become 2. So I would just say, and since there's a 1 on the bottom, I wouldn't even have to have a denominator. I could say negative 2i square root of 5. Okay? That kind of combines a lot of things in one. Alrighty. That's rationalizing the denominator part two.